Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we talk about the value of grass and forage resources. We're at the Indianapolis, Indiana headquarters of Corteva AgriScience, the industry leader in range and pasture products. I'm joined now by Byron Sloop, Corteva's global leader of weed management biology and field science. Byron, tell us why does Corteva continue to spend so much time and energy and effort focused on range and pasture? Uh, that's a great question as to why we spend this much time uh, overall focusing on range and pasture. We're an innovation company, so overall we're focused on innovation and research and development, but to the mission of our company, which is really to enrich the lives of those who produce and those who consume, and ensuring that for generations to come, it means we have to innovate. We can't do it like we did 100 years, 50 years, 30 years ago. And so at the core of what we do is the innovation, the R&D, and range and pasture is at the center of that, uh, simply because around the globe, 40% of the, the Earth's surface is covered by grasslands. 70% of agricultural land is grassland. And so for us, it's an important part for our business, for our customers, and the people who are having to manage uh, all of that land. And so if we are going to provide solutions, it means we have to be invested in the research that it's going to take to provide the solutions to those uh, land managers or ranchers and farmers. And I think those statistics, that 70% of the world's land mass covered by grass, is, is such an important and essential one. Frankly, not all of your competitors focus this much on range and forage. Is it unique in terms of the amount of time you focus on range and forage? It is unique uh, from a, a global R&D company like ours to be focused as much as, as we do, because there are other crops that mm -hmm. uh, based on the overall value and the acreage, there's more focus on those, the row crops. We know corn, soybeans, wheat, and so on. For us, this is a market where we are dedicated to those customers because they're, they're not just, in many cases, not just grazing cattle, but they're mm -hmm. also growing corn, soybean, wheat, and so on. So there are these integrated uh, uh, facilities or enterprises that are out there. But the history of our company goes back for decades where we have been focused on range and pasture, mm -hmm. and it remains the same today, where that's an integral part of what we do. So if you've invited us to spend the day at this uh, industry-leading research and, and, and development facility. Tell us what this facility means to your R&D effort. This facility is huge as far as our overall R&D efforts. So focused primarily on what we do for crop protection, uh -huh. uh, you know, Right here is the heart of our crop protection discovery efforts. As a global company, of course, we have uh, research facilities spread out all around the globe, but this is really the nexus of those activities, the largest number of, of our R&D associates in the one location, as well as the facilities that are here, um, multiple acres under greenhouses, state-of-the-art labs, automation in labs, but also just the people who are here that are focused on what's the next generation of solutions for weed management, insect management, uh, disease management, the wide spectrum of, uh, of uh, solutions that our customers might need. Yeah. You know, as farmers and ranchers, we see the product when it's in the jug, but tell our viewers a little bit about the process that leads up to the development and ultimate registration of, of products. Uh, that's a great question. By the time a customer sees the jug, uh, we have already invested hundreds of millions of dollars and anywhere from 10 to sometimes 15 years before they see the jug or what's in the jug. So before we even get to what's going to be in the jug, we've got to try to figure out um, what is the question we're trying to answer? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Right. And uh, a really good example of this, uh, Pro Clova is mm -hmm. a really great example of this. In more than two decades of doing this, uh, I always sheepishly have one answer when a customer or a farmer, somebody would ask me, what do you have that will control Canada thistle, musk thistle, uh, but not kill my clover? And you kind of have to shrink away and say nothing, because <laughs> uh, we've got great herbicides, yeah. but they'll kill your clover. And over multiple years, uh, multiple different iterations, you know, we that was always one of our research goals is to be able to deliver the efficacy that the customer would want. Right. So you'll kill the weed, but how do you keep the clover around? And so that was 
the driver behind the development of ProClovo, uh, for example. So, you know, the, the development is based on what we know the customers need, because we don't really subscribe to build it and they will come necessarily. <laughs> right. You want to know what yeah. it is that they want so that when you build it, they do come. Yeah. I know Corteva has a strong commitment to sustainability. I'm curious, how does that commitment to sustainability impact what you do from R&D standpoint? That's a great question. Sustainability now is fully ingrained in everything that we do in R&D. We have sustainability goals that are even in our product goals that we have. So uh, that is everything from the active ingredients that we're developing, the packaging, the formulations, the manufacturing sites, all of those are factored in and are, are, uh, are based on uh, the UN sustainability goals. And we don't just meet those goals, we work to exceed them. So in many cases, and particularly when you think about range and pasture, for most people, when they think natural area, yeah. what comes to mind would be the open fields, grasslands, wildlife habitat areas. And we develop products uh, in our range and pasture uh, portfolio that go into those sites, not just to kill a weed, but what impact do you then have on the biodiversity in that area, the wildlife, the ecosystem services? Yeah. So uh, we've talked about all of these products and how they fit in. They align with our sustainability goals. Uh, Pro Clover that I mentioned before, mm -hmm. one of the active ingredients, uh, Rinse Core Active, mm -hmm. uh, fits directly into that. Uh, low use rate, um, uh, reduced risk registration with the US EPA. We're using this at rates where um, other active ingredients, even in the same um, mode of action family would be applied at 10, 15, 30 times the use rate. And this is our focus and our commitment to those who produce and those who consume is that they should feel comfortable when they see how we are doing R&D and also what farmers are using in producing the food that they eat. Well, I want to say thank you for your career long dedication to the range and forage industry. Uh, thank you for inviting us to this incredible research and development center here. And uh, thank you and your organization for all you do on behalf of those of us that ranch. You're very welcome. Great to have you here.